Hey, it's Matt with Replit here. And if you've used the agent, you know that it can help configure your entire development environment, build applications, and deploy them to the cloud, all without having to install anything on your computer. But what you might not know is that the agent can also configure databases for you. And if you haven't built an app before, databases are important for storing user data and reaccessing information. For example, if you built a game of Snake, let's say, uh, and you had nowhere to store your high scores, they wouldn't be that useful because no one would be able to see them after you refresh the page. Similarly, if you had a habit tracker, but you couldn't keep track of your habits more than one browser session, well, that's not a very useful habit tracker. And those are the two examples we're gonna discuss today, and I'll show you exactly how to make sure your applications have our Postgres databases in them when you build with Replit Agent. So the first thing I wanna emphasize is that by default, the agent knows when to add databases. For example, if you're building an application that just needs a database by default, a habit tracker is a great example, the agent will automatically implement that for you. So let's take a look. I have my habit tracker right here. I can create a habit, um, let's say uh, Matt's new habit, and I get this nice little display. So we can track the days, I get some analytics here, um, and I can see the full year as well. Uh, so how do I know that this has a database? Well, the best way to know is if I refresh this page, the habits are still there. If I open uh, our dev URL in a new tab, I'm gonna get, exactly the same display, right? And so I know that this is persisting across sessions, across different windows. I can be confident that there's a database. Another way to know is that this is a uh, TypeScript app and there's a drizzle config in here. And you can see they're defining a Postgres database and some uh, database schemas and migrations. It's not too important to worry about the specifics of those, but we can be certain that uh, there's a database for this application. It's working well. I tested this out, right? I can delete habits. I can add new habits. Um, so by default, Agent is designed to add databases to your application to incorporate persistent storage. It can run SQL queries and then detect the results of those queries. So that means it can query the database and see if anything's going wrong to improve the schema to make sure that things are working as they should. And it can implement these applications. When you, when you deploy this app as well, um, the database will be present. Everything will be exactly the same, as a matter of fact. So how did I do that? Well, if I scroll up to my original prompt, there was <laughs> quite a bit of back and forth for this app. I really was just trying to clone this habit tracking app, right? So I said, hey, here's a habit tracking app. Help me clone this. Help me build something visually similar. So I started with this, and then I kind of iterated on the UI to get to uh, something that's a bit different, maybe a bit more complicated, actually. But you can see that the agent proposed something for me. And then if we look through uh, some of the logs here, I think we might actually be even, might actually, yep. So the first thing that the agent did when I was building this prototype is create a Postgres database. And you know, at any time I can click on that and I can go to the progress tab and see what the agent was doing. I can see you know the different uh, interactions it took. And then I can even go down and see like, okay, it's, it's interacting with the database and uh, configuring some commands here. So, the first thing I want to emphasize, right, is by default, the agent takes the actions to add persistent data to incorporate a Postgres database. Now you might be saying, well, what if I build an application that it doesn't do that by default? So um, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I mentioned uh, Habit Tracker and Snake, and so that's my second example. So second agent app here, I have a little game of Snake. I uh, made it look like the... <laughs> <laughs> There's sound effects too. Um, I made it look like Nokia Snake, so uh, maybe nostalgic for some with a few little animations. And you can see that it's keeping track of my score and there's a high score. And so we get some, <laughs> we get some animations when you have a new high score as well. But looking into this application, if you dig deeper, this high score is actually be st being stored locally in the browser. So if other people came and saw this, if other folks uh, wanted to play your game and you know compete against each other or be on a leaderboard, you wouldn't have access to those high scores. If you refreshed your browser, or if you went in an incognito tab, you'd also lose your high score. So how can we prompt the agent to incorporate a database? Well, it's actually as simple as just doing what I just said. Um, so typically once you get to an MVP or an agent uh, finishes working, it's best to start a new chat to be sure that things are more targeted. And starting a new chat clears out the context of the agent um, and ensures that uh, the agent is really only thinking about, it's kind of like a human being, right? Like if you were trying to multitask and do 10 different things at once, or if you were trying to you know, uh, do something complicated, I don't know what's something complicated to do, juggle, but you were caught up in what your boss said to you yesterday, right? You're gonna have a hard time performing while you're thinking about uh, that stuff from yesterday. Same thing with the agent, right? Give the agent one thing at a time. Once it's done with one task, you create a new chat. 
So here we'll say, um, let's implement a leaderboard, leaderboard, um, so that we can keep track of high um, of all of the scores. The high score on the app should reflect the number one spot on the leaderboard. And so it's important to be descriptive in terms of like what you actually want. So what I'm envisioning in my mind is I play this, I get a leaderboard and then I have my score, I enter the name, kind of like any classic arcade game you've ever played, right? Users should be able to enter their names and we'll say like up to three characters, like those uh, old school games, you know, that you play. And uh, my name is Matt, M-A-T-T, -T, two T's, don't get it wrong, but I could only enter one. So that'll be our prompt. And let's see how the agent interprets uh, this query. Well. It's telling us that it wants to make some backend changes, create a leaderboard table in a Postgres database. Perfect. Um, it needs to make some front end changes and implement a database schema, right? Anytime you have a database, you need to have uh, some sort of schema that, that uh, basically informs you how the database is configured, um, as well as some UI UX features, um, implement a three character name input that looks good. Uh, we could add player avatars that seems <laughs> a bit complex. I don't think we really want any of these additional things. So I'm just gonna approve that plan. But um, once the agent starts working here, the first thing that you see is that it should be configuring that database. And so if we take a look here, it's creating models.py. And we also explain what the agent is doing. So you can see we're basically configuring the database URL that Replit provides as a part of this application and we're hooking it up uh, to this app. So basically by prompting the agent with a feature that requires persistent data storage, it's going to know to use Postgres. And that's what we're getting here. Once it's done running the backend and front end here, we should have a fully functioning app with a leaderboard that works with a database. Okay, so it took an extra prompt. You can see actually that the agent was fetching from local storage for the previous leaderboard, but now the high score reads from the number one position in the high score. You can see here, if I hit enter, um, we're logging the high scores uh, for, well, me. Or, I don't have any friends, but we're logging the high scores for the game. And if I hit, uh, let's make sure all the animations work. If I start playing here and then I beat that high score, we get new high score. And then if I lose uh, and I log my name here, it updates, right? So um, now there are no errors. We're playing our game and we're logging these high scores. Now, if I open a new page, so if I go to this dev URL, which should be a different page and I refresh, and then we just lose here. <laughs> See, you notice that the name wasn't saved that time. Um, all my high scores are saved and they're stored in that Postgres database. Uh, we can see that by going to the database or the Postgres tool here. And there are two tables. So we have a sequence, well, actually one table, a sequence as a part of a table, leaderboard entry. And if I open this, we have the player name, the score, and when it was created. So just like that, we added a Postgres database to our application. And the point I wanna emphasize is that number one, the agent knows when to add these uh, persistent storage options to your app. But if you wanna add a feature that requires persistent storage, you can prompt the agent with natural language describing what you wanna achieve. And if that goal requires a form of persistent storage, it'll implement a Postgres database. At the same time, if you know a little bit about Postgres databases, if you know about the tools and technologies that we're building with here, you could say something more descriptive. For example, use a Postgres database to track these scores, You know, add semi-structured data support and store the data in XYZ format. The agent will be able to handle that as well. Again, I'm Matt with Repl, and this has been how you can add persistent storage using Postgres databases to your REPLs with Replit agent. Until next time, peace.